Wie is André Rieu? Wie is die vliegende Hollander die zo beroemd is geworden met zijn Johan Strauss orkest? De Engelse televisie maakt een prachtige reportageserie over de populairste violist van de wereld. Wij kijken trots mee hoe het buitenland kijkt naar onze André. Bye-bye. And then I do. Every year I tour the world with my orchestra. This year, for example, we were in Austria, Australia, Argentina, Mexico, in the UK, in France, in Germany, in Denmark. I have 35 trillion air miles, I think. <laughs> It's a busy schedule. So wherever I'm going, I like to get there fast, by any means of transport. And in a new city, I like to see the sights. Wow, look how impressive, the blue mask. And greet my fans. Met wow. Madonna, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my world, and buckle up, because we are going on the road. I think half the year we are on tour. We are so used to go together on the road that when we come to an airport, they always prepare for us a group boarding. And then I'm there on the boarding path. Hey, Vincenzo! I scream all the names and I know that. Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Boys. And then we have to go to the gate and I see this line. <laughs> But it's nice and it, it gives really this, this warm family feeling of being together. Traveling the world is fantastic, but the most beautiful place for a musician is of course Vienna, the city of the walls, the city of music. And my first stop in this beautiful city is the Stadtpark. Designed in the style of an English garden, it's home to many statues of Austria's famous musicians. One in particular catches my eye. He is the reason why I'm in Vienna. Actually, he was the first pop star. Everybody knew Johann Strauss. And he was actually playing every Sunday in the park. That's the way he started. It's not for nothing that I named my orchestra after this fantastic composer. Since, since more than 150 years, he gave so much joy to the world. Just listen to his waltzes and you are happy. I think I have the most beautiful profession in the whole world to be on stage and play his music. Fantastic. They call me the king of the world. So when I go to Vienna <laughs> and I go outdoors, I do two steps and I, hey, Andre, can I have an autograph? Oh, can I have a photo with you? I love your music, I love your waltzes. I almost always do that because I, that's part of the friendship that I have with my audience. That was part of my dream, that the people would love my music, of course. And when I'm in Vienna, Thank you, sir. making a fiaker drive through the town and they're all waving. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> This is the only way to see Vienna, in a fiaker with two horses and this weather. It's really, really beautiful. We are so lucky. This city is really very proud 
of Johann Strauss. This is the city of music. And here in Vienna, you can follow in the footsteps of Johann Strauss from the apartment where he wrote his most famous composition, The Blue Danube, to the final resting place in the city cemetery, where he lays among other musical greats, including Beethoven, Brahms, and Schubert. But my next stop is the town hall, a place which holds vivid memories for me. Now we are in the middle of summer. When I think of this building, immediately I'm frozen. <laughs> I'm frozen, because in the middle of winter, here was an ice rink. We did a very, very beautiful skating with, at that time, they were the world champions. And we did it on the song, The Titanic. And it was really, it was so cold. I was in my tuxedo with my thin shoes on the ice. And we finished the piece in three minutes because it was so cold, we had to go inside. And I wanted to, I couldn't move because my feet were stuck in the ice. It was really so cold. It was really cool, but so beautiful. Next stop on my worldwide tour is Buenos Aires, Argentina, a city of three million people rich with music. It was always my dream that from the moment I had an officer to travel the world. I think half the year we are on tour, we go to all the continents. So that means Europe, all the countries, America, North, South America. Australia is not every year, but then we do, for example, South Africa. So. It's the best life you could ever dream of. This is my first time in Buenos Aires and there's one side I just had to see. Here's the balcony. I'm feeling really very emotional because 
Every night when I'm on stage, I see this palace. And every night when Marussia sings this beautiful Don't Cry For Me Argentina, it brings me to tears. And I have the same feeling now, because it's different when you are here, <laughs> really standing in front of the balcony where Eva Peron spoke to her people. It won't be easy, you'll think it's strange When I try to explain how I feel That I still need your love after all that I've done and sevens with you. I had to let it happen. I had to change. Couldn't stay all my life down at here. Looking out of the window, staying out of the sun. So
Eva Perón is Argentina's most iconic first lady. In fact, her resting place at the Rocolita Cemetery is still one of the most visited attractions in Buenos Aires. And before my concerts, I have time to visit another popular tourist trap. This is Boca in Argentina, where the old Italians came and they didn't have money to, uh, to paint their houses. So they said, can you borrow me some paint? And uh, they borrowed, and then the other one borrowed, and they couldn't give it back. So it ended up in a whole pandemonium of colors, and that's the result. It's, it's beautiful. Eh? And on every balcony, there's Eva Peron. You can make photos with Maradona. Maradona, hey, hey. <laughs> They are huge football fans in Argentina, but they also love music. And at my concert, they are queuing around the block. In Buenos Aires, in um, fact, they waited almost 20 years for me to come. And so they waited really a long time. I love Andrea Rio. The music <laughs> is fantastic. And thank you for coming to Argentina. I like the music, I like everything. He's an inspiration for me. And this is the first time he comes to Argentina, so of course I am very excited to, to be here. An amazing experience that we want to, to enjoy. And we are about to actually. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for years that Andre Rio comes here to Argentina and I feel that it's a, a miracle for me. He's the best musician of the world for me. We've been waiting for Andre for a long, long time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the happiest man in the world because I can be here tonight with you in Buenos Aires. And I had a treat in store for my Argentinian friends, the incredible soprano Kimi Scotta. Kimi, she came from South Africa, and I was immediately in love with her and her voice, and she's such a nice girl. And in Buenos Aires, Kimi performed one of my favorite arias.
Another day and another country for myself and the Johann Strauss Orchestra as we continue our world tour. And now we are in Istanbul, Turkey. <laughs> I really enjoyed being on the road. When the boys were small, I was in the symphony orchestra in Maastricht and there was a bus picking up the orchestra members. And I was standing on the pavement and saw the boys and Marjorie behind the window and I was very sad that I had to go. But I stepped into the bus and I said, hello. And then once I'm with my orchestra, I forget and I have fun. We are always on the road with friends, with a big family. And for our first ever concert in Istanbul, I've invited some local musicians to join us on stage to play the Turkish song Atirla Sevgili. Atirla Sevgili is waltz and it's so popular because generally in films or in television, uh, every day you can hear these songs. It's coming generation from generation. I'm really excited uh, because of uh, playing with Andre Rio and also his Strauss Orchestra. It's really amazing being a part of this kind of excellent show. Yeah, he's really famous in, in the world and so in Turkey. And now uh, we are going to play together uh, on the same stage and I'm really happy and really excited. <laughs>
my first time performing in Istanbul, so of course I have to explore this beautiful city. Wow, look how impressive, the Blue Mosque. There are around 3,000 mosques in Istanbul, and they look beautiful. As I head further into the city, I find a smaller mosque, which in a funny way reminds me of home. So when you look closely, what do you see? Tulips. Everybody thinks tulips are from Holland, but originally it was a gift from the Turkish. Come from here, from Istanbul. Tulips from Istanbul instead of tulips from Amsterdam. And if you look closely, they're everywhere here in Istanbul. As you can see, tulips everywhere. And look what I bought from Marjorie. Ta da! Tulips! <gasps> <laughs> With Marjorie's gift still intact, I continue my shopping trip. So I promised Marjorie to buy Turkish Delight when I was in Istanbul, and of course I did it. Thank you very much. But then I tasted it. It was so fantastic. It is really good. You should try it. When I come back from Turkey. <laughs> another day, another airport. Traveling around the world with this 60-piece orchestra it has to be organized. First, the thing you see on stage. All that we have four times. One set is on a boat to Australia. One set we are using in Buenos Aires. The other set is on the way to Austria. We really come home when we are in an arena, wherever it is in the world. The arena is different, but the rest is the same. One of the routine moments every day when we are on tour is that after the sound check there is a meal because a hungry musician is a bad musician. Lamb stew, schnitzel and most popular in our catering, mashed potatoes. We bring a whole kitchen on wheels with us uh, which means all the pots and pans and ovens and machines we need. At the moment we have to feed a kind of 120 people every day. Blumko. It's magic. Thank you well. Oh, Blumko is cheese. And after the meal, I go to sleep. And I'm going to phone with Marjorie. And then I say bye-bye. And then I do. And that's the moment that the people come in and I'm there and they, know, they don't know that, but I'm sleeping to be fresh on stage. When my concert starts, we come on with the 76 from Bones to get known to the audience. And I feel, ah, this is going to be a fantastic night. I give the high five, we go on stage, we do our concert. Then after the break, we played over that Marsh, and they all look up <laughs> because they know now the balloons are coming. Because 25 years all over the world, I dropped the balloons during the Radetzky Marsh. That are simple balloons. 10,000 people are from serious people, suddenly children. It's their cue to break loose and to say, okay, now the party starts.
So wherever we are in the world, out of respect for the audience, I play two or three local pieces. Of course, in Mexico, it's Cielito Lindo and the Hat Dance. And in Australia, of course, um, I am, you are, we are Australia. In the UK, home sweet home, and we'll meet again. And in Vienna, we did um, with the Swiss horns, and they loved it, you know. They come on with hey ho, hey ho, la 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 la. la. And then there is a piece that Ruth composed, uh, one of the trombone players. Such a beautiful sound. Tonight we're going to play uh, symphony number one. We have uh, five normal arp horns, uh, which they use in, in, in Austria and Switzerland. And they are like four meters. And we have one bass arp horn. It's double the length, so it's almost 10 meters long. When you play an arp horn, it really sounds like heaven is opening. I feel when we play this during the encores, the people think, ah, that's our music. He plays our music. And they are, they are very, very, they love me for that, I think. I will never stop touring. Touring is my life. I'm not a hit artist who has a hit and he tours three months and then never, nobody hears about it. This is my life for already 25 years now, and I love it, and everybody loves it. All these members are with me all this time. They can go to another orchestra. No, they want to stick with me and travel around the world because it's so fantastic. So, I'm not 64, and I'm going on until when I'm, I don't know, 250. <laughs> yeah! As long as my audience love my music, I will continue to tour and be on the road. I love your dream! I love your dream! Thank you for coming! Thank you for the music. Thank you very much for coming to Istanbul. We had a great, great night. Andre, without any doubt, is the greatest musician in the whole world. Excellent! It was beautiful. We're just looking forward to the next one. Andre, I want to meet you and give you a big hug. Excellent. Desde el principio al final. Espectacular. Buenísimo. I love you so much. Beautiful. I'm from Buenos Aires. Vamos a de Argentina. We love you. Right off in Maastricht, and tonight's concert is a huge celebration, and the audience are very special indeed. My name is uh, Colonel uh, Robert uh, Thoma. I've been serving in, uh, in uniform in Lebanon. I am a major in the Royal Netherlands Air Force. We did our job. The music tonight is to honor our brave servicemen and women. So we used to train to music like that during the combat. Oh, those were, that brought back a lot of old memories. And I fly to England to speak with the force's sweetheart, Dame Vera Lynn. I represented their sweetheart, their wives, 
and um, I suppose they picture an English girl back home. And yes, I was thrilled. And then, what a girl. <laughs> the Breithof is brimming with heroes. This is the veterans' concert. Thank you.